having a negative feeling, it was more just waking up, feeling like this three-year journey is coming to an end. And tonight I'm getting all my answers that I've worked for for three years. And I got on stage and I felt calm. I don't know how, it was definitely the Lord because I stood there, my heart rate did not even go up at all. I felt at peace. Even standing in the top two, I was like, whatever happens, this was all I could give to South Africa. And with or without this crown, I will continue, but I know we can do amazing things together with this organization. So I'm really, really, truly so grateful, so, so honored. Say much more. I think let's go straight question and answers. Right. Will you just tell us where you're from as well? Kitu Meze Mark on News 24. You're the first Miss South Africa to wear the Moana Tree of Life crown. How does it feel? And number one, we know that you're from Twani. Where in Twani are you from? Because I, like a few of my colleagues in the media industry, are from the city of Pretoria. So where are you from? Tell us a bit more about the significance of wearing this crown mm. and what you're going to be standing for as Miss South Africa. Mm. It's what I represent. <laughs> it was on my home ground, so it was really important night for me. I come from Centurion, born and raised. Born and raised and stayed there 26 years of my life. Wearing Moana, I'll be very honest, eh? this is a very new feeling. Like, it fits well. Also, this may be a Like, it's a really good fit. They really designed it perfectly. But, this is really all about unity, and when we saw the crown reveal, like, it really did speak to me. Um, so, yeah, it was obviously about the South African sunrise, so I hope I can be your guys' sunrise every single morning, representing South Africa. Um, but I think for this year, my main focus would be education. I think it's a legacy I would love to build on top of Derby's. So there's already plans, um, actions, plans and actions that's put in place, and hopefully I can make it a lot bigger. But then also I'm looking at some um, infrastructure as well, so we can put up some IT centrum. So I've spoke some with some um, of my partners that I've worked uh, with for the past two years, and I think incredible things are going to happen this next year. Right, who's next? Natasha celebrating Thuso. Mabedu Lorialparis first Sub-Saharan Global Brand Ambassador. Personally, I think for me, I would have came back and just owned up to my mistakes if there were any. But then also showcasing to South Africa how I can evolve and change as a person. Um, we all make mistakes when we are younger. You know, we can't scrutinize other people for that. So that's personally what I would have done. But you know what, it was a personal decision. Like that was based for her life at the time and we need to respect and support that. Hi, Gemma Hutu here from Drum Magazine. Congratulations, first of all. Secondly, um, it's not the first time that you enter Miss South Africa. Did it feel any different this time around? Did you feel like the stars were aligning with your crown, <laughs> darling? There is a silver lining on top, yes. I mean, of course, of course, of course, of course. Of course. <laughs> How different did it feel this time around? Completely. Like, I don't even recognize myself back in 2020. Um, but I honor her because I wouldn't have been this woman without her and all the struggles and turbulences. So I am proud of her, you know, for trying, entering, and taking that leap of faith. But it's a destiny thing. So I came back and I was like, you know what, if I don't win the South Africa, I would be at peace. But I'm sitting here and I'm the South Africa doesn't feel real yet. <laughs> um, all right, uh, anything else? Oh, look, lost this side. I see all right. it. Okay, sorry, the light's blinding me. Okay, the light is blinding me. Not here? I don't know. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Um, so what's the best piece of advice you received during the 
So entering back in 2020, I was really scared to be vulnerable. Um, it was the first time opening up about my childhood and not even realizing that there was PTSD. So I started seeing a psychologist um, after this universe and that's kind of where I knew that that vulnerability was something I really had to deal with and coming back, I transformed it into this strength where I get to really, really connect with South Africans on different stories, different topics, and I feel like that will always be my main goal. Like, yes, I'm going to make an impact, I'm going to make a difference, but I do not want to be envied. I really want to be relatable to my South Africans. And, um, can I just add on? Also, yes. On stage, you say you are ready to serve. Yes. Um, what is it that you're ready to serve us on, and are you ready and have what it takes to serve us on your living of this service? 100%. Um, so I spoke on it with my top seven statement. I'm working with ASUS um, alongside some IT coding bursaries for women only. We are looking at approximately 25 bursaries, but then also I went back to my campus. Um, I spoke on being financially excluded, and I did modeling competitions in order to win these bursaries. And I studied at Boston City Campus. So I went back to them and I said, listen, this is my story. You guys have powered me in a way you don't even realize. And now they're also joining in with bursaries. So I hope to go to every single varsity in South Africa, even if it's one. Yeah. It's really going to make a difference. So already started it's going up from here. I'm going to take about four to five more questions, if that's okay, everybody. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I'm going that time. I'm going that time. I am, I am, I am. So I'm going to the lady first, then the gentleman. All of them. Hi, Natasha. Hi, everyone. My name is Ola Tando. I'm from IOL. Um, Natasha, congratulations. Thank you. Um, well, this is a positive environment. It is the second year running, and the naysayers will forever be out there. Who, what is your response to, say, to someone who says, oh, well, she came back again, it's the second year, she was favored, and that's why she won. What's your response to that? And thank you for asking that question, because it really, like, obviously, reading it in the news was disheartening to see how your artwork is being invalidated. But I think if you put yourself in my shoes three years ago, it was set in stone from the beginning that there would be three international representatives. To me, the goal was also always to represent South Africa, and that's exactly what I did in my circumstances. I went there, I gave it my all. I think if I knew the repercussions, I would have definitely maybe said, you know what, I'm maybe looking to come back into South Africa, so if that would deny me or not allow me, then maybe my choice would have been different, but that was always a part of the rules, that I could come back. So it's a difficult situation as well, but I don't even remember what I did two years ago. This is a completely different person. Like, even if you go back to Miss Universe, I have changed a lot. Mentally and emotionally, a lot has happened in between. A lot. So um, that would be my response, is just, you know, when you put yourself in my shoes, what would you have done? Um, hi, 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 Zach. Good. Good. Really, thank you. Um, back from the video update. My question to you is, I, I have five nieces, young girls growing up in this, in this world. What do you have to say to the, to the young girls growing up? What yes. <coughs> and I think the message is important, but the actions are stronger. And I think by showing up tonight on that stage, I'm really showing what second chances of perseverance and resilience truly looks like. Because I was publicly in front of the whole world, not placed, it felt like failure. So many people witnessed that. And to afterwards deal with all the emotional struggles that came with it, I think it's such a like, true inspiration to show people that it's all about checking second chances in life. So that's what I wanted to show on the stage. And if that message was spread across South Africa, I'm, I'm content. Right. I'm gonna take those three questions. Gentlemen, please also. Okay. So one year as well. Okay, five questions. That's it. Okay. All right. So, the gentleman in the orange first. Nice to meet you. Talk to us about one best person you've got. Question two. I've zoomed on you several times, and I've noticed that you are sporting it. How can I call you there? You call it a cavity. Smile. Is there no smile or a special or that design? <laughs> Is this my smile? <laughs> yes! <laughs> but my cheeks are hurting a little bit of a lie. <laughs> 
Um, we would I want to meet? I would love to meet our president. I really would. I feel like it's a responsibility of us wow. to have these conversations. So that's really the first person I would love to meet. I will wear my my suit. Yes. I will show up and ask the right questions. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, at the back there, with the hand up. Yep. Fine, thanks in you. circumstances weren't always ideal. Um, I have opened up about losing our childhood home and losing my father when I was 16. And so I had to learn in a, a, like independence at such a young and crucial age. So I think that resilience was built at a really young age, almost not taking no for an answer. If they say you can't study, I'm going to show you how I will study. If they say you can't drive yourself to school, I will win that scooter at the modeling competition to drive myself to school. And I think it's almost just, it's, it's practice in your life, the daily small things that do matter. Like Miss South Africa was a big leap of faith coming back and obviously seeing the comments on social media saying like, they wouldn't crown her because what can she contribute? I was like, I will show them what I will contribute. Yeah. Miss South Africa is a role in itself and that is what I want to do is serve with this title. And I think what I would say for someone who's ready to give up, just take your, take your time. Like if you're struggling with depression or mentally struggling, really take all the time that you would need. I actually wanted to enter last year um, and I wasn't allowed according to the regulations and the rules. And I remember sitting at my psychologist saying, I was disheartened because I was already kind of mentally preparing myself to come back. And I think it was a timing thing. It was working through emotions and almost asking myself, yes, maybe I wasn't good enough twice, but I will be good enough. Okay. Natasha, we also look, we um, all look. Um, um, did you see your family at the back here? Yes! Um, <laughs> what what they also say played the last three years, you coming back, it was a big journey this year, especially the competition really changed. Um, what role did they play in you coming back? Ah, uh, shame. <laughs> My support system. <laughs> they got the call every single day when I was struggling. Oh, shame. Um, they play a very crucial part of my life. Whenever I need to debrief, whenever I am in a moment of doubt, I phone my family. My family is my absolute everything. We've been through so much together. I will always, always just fall back on the people that knows me best and that will say, Mia, yeah, you aren't giving up. Like You're going to fight until that crown is on someone's head. You're going to show them what you are made of. So my family is my everything. Really, really nice and, uh, and appreciate you guys. Thank you. Okay, Oh my gosh. Uh, Natasha, I think I forgot to say one very significant thing, which is congratulations. Thank you. For the first time I've spoken to you. Um, I've got two questions. Yes. One for you, one for Stephanie. Steph, uh, I'll pose it to Steph first. And okay. then Steph, you can answer. Uh, Miss South Africa for the first challenge. Is this a challenge? Is this a challenge? Is a crown chase is a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have been humbled. No, not crown chases. <laughs> no, nothing like that. Okay. Nothing at all. Yeah. Nothing along those lines at all. But for the first time this year, Miss South Africa is old enough to, I think, the age gap, age difference, for instance, was changed up. And then married women and mothers, like myself, among us. Yes. Well, welcome to enter for the very first time. And um, what do you think the significance of opening it up? And then none of those particular contestants making it say um, into like maybe the top two or even making up to the number one, you know, the title coming. I think that. And also, I still have another question after you answer me. 
Sorry, yeah. Are you want me to answer now? Yeah. Okay, of course. Um, <laughs> I think that, you know, obviously Jordan van der Weyfe Langer represented us on that stage yes, as a married yes, woman. Yes, um, I think that, let's be honest here and say, this is the first year we're doing something. And um, I think with the process of crown chases and people getting used to it, I think we've got to take some time to always see people emerge in this, in this realm. I mean, we saw that in 2019 when we opened up to trans, um, the trans community, right? And we only spoke about our trans contestant from 2021 and 2022. So it took a couple of years to really push that, if you know what I mean. So I think that that's what we will see going forward. What I do have to say is that those are very important things. We are pushing boundaries here. We have to start the narrative that any woman can be whoever she wants to be. And that is why we exist. We are a voice and a platform for women to make a difference. Amen. Thank you. And that's my second question. I don't say I have two questions. I'm very sorry to the audience here. Yeah? <laughs> this is not your first actual beauty crowning contest, right? So you've won another one first. Why was it so significant to come back to Middle Africa and actually try and win this contest mm -hmm. again? What are the significance behind that? And now that you've actually won the title, what does it mean for you and for everyone that stands behind you, your community and everything behind you? So first of all, I wouldn't say, uh, see this as a beauty pageant. This is an empowerment platform. And you can't measure it up to anything else I've done before. I think in between these past three years, it was, it was more formulating the why of coming back. Where I'll be very honest, back in 2020, I had to still figure that out, what that looks like. Coming back, I was so crystal clear on what my why is and what I wanted to do, but more importantly, already starting with that. So I think for me, it's, it's the impact, the lasting impact I'm going to make, and I have a year to show you guys exactly what I'm going to do. So this, to me, I don't see it as a beauty pageant. I really just wanted to voice what I stand for and what I'm going to do with this year. And yeah, hopefully I will be a representative and an ambassador for all of you guys. Right. I'm going to take two more questions, and if I can just ask everybody to be quiet while we're doing this at the back, please. Oh. Oh. Sorry, guys.